Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from it. So with this, we will move on to the next system that is the excretory system. So by now we already saw that how, uh, what, are the, what are the food habits of earthworm, how the food gets digested, how the digested food gets absorbed and how that is circulated throughout the body with the help of blood vessels. So all those things are clear. Now after digestion there will be some amount of food which will not get digested. So what happens to that waste because if that is not getting digested means that cannot be absorbed or that cannot be utilized as energy by any part of the earthworm. So it needs to be removed out of the earthworm body. So how that is done? So that process is nothing but excretion. So how excretion happens in case of earthworm? Also, there will be so many impurities inside the body here and there dissolved in blood or dissolved in water. So how will that come out from the earthworm's body? So for that, there is a specialized excretory system. And there are specialized excretory organs present inside the earthworm. And these specialized organs are called nephridia. So let us see where do we see these nephridia. Now if you, complete, if you try to understand what nephridia is, you can consider them analogous to human kidneys. Like how we have kidneys for excretion, similarly they have nephridia. Now a pair of nephridia exists in each segment. Now when I say each segment, it is actually present in all the segments in the body of earthworm except the first three segment and the last segment. So if you see in this picture also, nephridia is not seen in the first three segments, one, two, three and the last segment. Everywhere else you see nephridia. These dotted structures which you see, that is nothing but nephridia. Now, there are many different types of nephridia which are present as is evident from this picture. Somewhere you see small dots, somewhere you see they are very much like close to each other, somewhere you see they are little tall and elongated. So there are many varieties of nephridia, however, their function is almost the same. <clears throat> so let us look at what do they do. So nephridia are segmentally arranged coiled tubules. So basically in each segment they are arranged and they are coiled tubules. There are many types of nephridia, septal nephridia, integumentary nephridia and pharyngeal nephridia. These are the three types of nephridia. So let us quickly see what each of them do. Septal nephridia, they are present on segment 15 to the last that open into intestine. Discharge waste products into alimentary canal. So this yellow color thing which you see here, that is nothing but alimentary canal or digestive tract. So septal nephridia is present on 15th segment to the last. So these nephridia, they are all your septal nephridia. So whatever you see here is nothing but septal nephridia. So what will they do? They will take all the waste products and put them into the alimentary canal. And what will happen to that waste product? That waste product will go out through the anus. Integumentary, they are present on the lining of the body wall of segment 3 to the last that open on the body surface. So segment 3 is somewhere here. So here you have the integumentary nephridia. So all these dot like structures which you see that is nothing but integumentary nephridia. They also they discharge their waste product to the exterior. So they do not send it into the alimentary canal. They directly send it to outside. Pharyngeal, they are three pair tufts in the fourth, fifth and sixth segments. So here. 4th, 5th and 6th segments you can see there are 3 pair tufts. So that is their cluster. They are present in cluster. They are pharyngeal nephritia. The name pharyngeal has come from pharynx because they are located near pharynx. 
they discharge their waste products again into the alimentary canal. So pharyngeal nephridia and septal nephridia will put all the waste products into alimentary canal, whereas integumentary nephridia will directly pass it to outside. Now let us look into the details of the functioning of nephridia. So what does nephridia do? It basically regulates the volume and composition of body fluids. So all the fluids present in the body, it, it just checks if nothing is in excess, if nothing is in short. So it basically regulates the composition and whatever waste material it finds, it collects, it collects all of them and put it into the alimentary canal or send it outside. Now in order to understand the function of nephridia, it is very important to understand the structure of nephridia. Now there are some important parts of nephridium. The first one is nephridiostome. Now nephridium looks like pores. As you can see here in this picture, they look like small dots, some holes. That is how they look like. However, they are not exactly holes. They start like a funnel. And then the funnel connects to a tube where the nephridium has a thin loop which reabsorbs some solutes and relinquishes them into blood. So something like this. So basically it will start as a funnel and then this funnel continues as a tube. And then it becomes a very coiled tube something like this and then this coiled tube ends in a small pore. So basically this is the small pore which you see here but actually inside this tube has a coiled tube and then that tube is connected to a funnel shaped structure. So this funnel shaped structure is nothing but nephridio stone. So what does it do? All the silomic fluid with waste enters here. So this is the place where all the silomic or all the fluid of the body cavity enters. And then this funnel connects to a tube. This is also known as nephridium's thin loop. So this tube will reabsorb some solutes and relinquish them into the blood. So whatever it thinks is still useful, it will reabsorb them and send it to the blood. Now the waste it will carry, it will not throw the waste out. The waste it will carry and it will take it to through a pore to the surface in the body wall and this pore is known as nephridio pore. So basically nephridium has three parts, nephridiostome, main body of nephridium and nephridiopore. So nephridiostome is the funnel shaped structure where the silomic fluid with all the waste and everything enters. Main body of the nephridium is nothing but this tube like structure which is extremely uh, coiled where reabsorption of some solutes take place. Then the last part is the nephridiopore. This is a small pour to the surface in the body wall through which the waste products is actually thrown out. So this is how the structure of a nephridium is. So now you know the function of nephridium, right? Because here whatever nephridia you see, you are basically seeing the nephridium pore. We are just seeing the small pore. But inside that, this entire structure is also present. So here these tube, these are the pharyngeal nephridia and these tubes are often known as ducts of pharyngeal nephridia. So here in this pharyngeal nephridia, you see the tubes are also visible to some extent. But in case of integumentary uh, nephridia and septal nephridia, we really don't see the tubes much. We just see the pores. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.